Let's make some kinetic type. First, we'll make a folder for our sources. We're going to use a source audio clip that we will import. There it is. It's Winston Churchill at his finest, as it were. Click into Nowhere, make a new composition. We'll call it last name underscore C06. If you're one of my students, use your own last name. Make it an NTSC D1 wide screen square pixel comp. And that's the presets, of course. And make it four seconds long. Thank you. And let's drag our audio into that composition. There it is. Now the uh, audio is about 19 seconds long. Our comp is 4 seconds long, so our audio trails off to the end like this. We want the end of our audio track, so select the audio track, and to make the end of the audio track about here, hit the right square bracket. That moves the end of the track to where our current time indicator is. Now we actually want it around 3 seconds, so let's just drag it to about mm, 3 seconds. Now, we want to see the audio waveform so that we know what we're working with. To do that, make sure that your audio layer is selected and hit LL. There's the waveform. And if we scrub with our current time indicator, we hear nothing. But if we hold down the command key while we scrub, we hear something. Sometimes you need to do that in order to uh, hear the audio, but right now we can tell from our waveform exactly what's going on. One thing we're going to do before we continue is, with the layer selected, we're going to duplicate it and add it or just move it back here. Hit LL again. The reason why we're doing this is we don't want the silence at the end of the clip. We want some static, so let's just take some static that we've got right here so that we'll have some static at the end. In order to get rid of this part here with the current time indicator right about here at the end of the other clip and our layer selected up here, hold down Option, left bracket. That gets rid of all of this stuff and just has the static. Just hide the waveform and we'll do a RAM preview so you can know what I'm talking about. This would have fine power. This would have fine power. Okay, our next task is to actually mark on this layer where the little sound bites are, where the uh, waveform is. We do this because if you have a very, very long composition and you're showing the waveform, it can really slow down your work. That's not a problem here because everything's so short, but let's mark the layer anyway. With the layer selected and the current time indicator at the start of one of your audio bits, roughly here, go to Layer and Add Marker. There it is. Now we want to name this mat to match the word. What's our first word? This, right? Hold down Command. There we go. So double click your marker. To name it, call it this. And hit OK. Let's do the same thing. Move to the beginning of the next word. I know this track, so you guys might have to do a little bit more work with your track to remember what word it is or to find the uh, audio waveform bits. If you zoom in, it's a little easier to see. So there's one right about here, and this was, so layer, add marker, double click on it, was, the next one is there, right about here, and that should be layer, add marker, was there. Now there is a shortcut for this, but it depends on what computer you're working with. With my computer, because I have a numeric keyboard, I would use the asterisk key off the numeric keyboard. 
I have found that the keyboard shortcut they indicate here is not accurate for a layer marker. It's great for a comp marker, but not for a layer marker. That might have been fixed with the latest version. At any rate, with your layer selected, hit the asterisk key on your numeric keypad off to the right, and double click. This was their finest. Move on. Where are we? Hour. Should be here. Hit Command. There we go. It's right here. And asterisk on the numeric keypad. Double click it and hour. Zoom out. We see the markers. We can close our waveform and lock the layer. Lock both of them. What the heck? See what that sounds like? This was our final tower. Perfect. Our next step is to add the type. So select your type tool and let's choose Helvetica 57. Oh, for now, let's just choose 60 as our height with the all caps selected and left justified. Type something. Well, I guess our first word is this and hit the enter key or click on the selection tool to close this. So our next one is enter actually it's was, right? Make sure we get our spelling right. This was their finest hour. Great. We won't mess with layout just yet. Next thing we will do is change the start point, the end point of each of those layers. Starting with this, select it, move to the this, hit the left bracket key. So now the this word starts at this point in time. See, nothing and this. Now to get to the was shortcut, hit the K key takes you to the next marker. Select the next layer, left bracket. K, next layer, left bracket. K, next layer, left bracket. K, next layer, left bracket. How does that look? This would have five tower. Perfect. This would have five tower. Great, now let's lay this sucker out. We're going to be using a camera later on, so you could choose to make the layers 3D now, or you could choose to make them 3D later. Let's make them 3D now. So, click the 3D cube, and let's start moving stuff and scaling stuff up. Let's hit V for our selection tool. We're not going to do any more typing. Actually, we will. One more bit of typing. Select hour, add a period after it. It's just good form. It looks better with a, with a period. Back to the selection tool. Move the this. Uh, let's say I like it bigger. Make it bigger. Okay. Uh, was there. I'm going to put them underneath the this. One of the things that you'll have to deal with when you're trying to line up stuff like this is what do you do with the T? You know, do you hang it over a little bit more? Those of you who uh, are very well versed in typography would be able to answer that question. Me, however, I will leave that as an exercise to the student. For the student? To the student. I've just scaled up to this so that it sort of lines up with the was there. Now, I'm expecting to actually rotate the camera around when we get to finest hour. In order for the finest hour to then be readable, horizontal like this, when the camera rotates 90 degrees, the words need to be rotated 90 degrees. So let's select finest and hour, hit R, and rotate our, well, enter under Z rotation 90. There they are. So hit V to go back to the selection tool, select in nothing, and let's just make finest really big, really big. Let's say like that maybe. Bring it here, and our, well, sometimes, you know, you've got to move stuff 
you know, I want to hit the hour, I want to select it, but it's in the way of the finest. I can sneak myself over here and select it, but sometimes if, it's, if the finest is like this, I can't get to the hour, so I need to move the finest away. That's just the way it works. So line up the finest there, and let's put the hour, let's make it a little bigger. Line it up at the bottom, make it a little bigger so that it lines up like that, say. Okay. Now, in order to see this properly, we need to add the camera. So, let's just close these guys up a bit. And let's add a camera. Layer, new, camera. Uh, one node, for sure. Call it camera one, right. And let's leave our preset at 50 millimeters. There's our camera. Have you seen any change? No, and that's to be expected. So, what are we going to do with our camera? This was their finest hour. Let's say we like this. We like this and was there. We like that. So, we want to set a keyframe for that, but where do we set that keyframe? Well, when finest appears, we want to already be rotated to 90 degrees. Let's move three frames back of that point. Zoom in. There we go. One, two, three. Why, you ask? Well, we're doing that because I, personally, like snappy camera moves. And we want this camera move to take three frames to get from here to the rotated position. So I went to the rotated position, moved three frames back. Let's set a keyframe for our camera as we like it. Position, P, Shift, R, to show rotation. Look at all those rotations. All that we care about is Z rotation because, well, personally, I'm not into a lot of X and Y rotation in kinetic type animations. I find it distracting. You might be able to do it right. I haven't seen a lot of well done X and Y rotations. Generally, Z works for me. So, set a keyframe for your Z rotation and for your position. That means we like it here, so you just click the stopwatch. Next, move to where the Finest shows up, and for Z rotation, type 90. Boom. There we are. Now the position isn't quite right, so let's move our camera position. If you drag the Y, you'll see the layer moves across instead of up and down. Well, that's because the camera is rotated 90 degrees. So roughly, we like that. Let's pull back a bit more, back a bit more by pulling the Z back. And let's get it up to about here. And how's that for you? Pull back a little more. Like that, maybe? How's that look? Uh, great. This was their finest hour. Let's do a RAM preview. This was our finest hour. This was our finest hour. Okay, not bad. That's the basics of it. You can emphasize different words by changing their color a bit, like finest. You could choose to make that white. Make it a little stronger. Or hour, you could make that a little bigger. Let's click on hour, make it a bit bigger. Make it really big. Uh, maybe about here. Actually, what size is that? What size is finest? It's 310. Make this 310 to match. Drag it down here like that. And that's another way of doing it. This would have finey power. This would have finey power. We're done.